Hello and welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. Consider subscribing if you haven't. Follow me on Instagram at watch underscore complications and check out the site watchcomplications.com where you can find tons of information, reviews, and whatnot on all things watches. In my most recent watch review video, I looked at a couple of Pagani Design watches. I'll put the link in the video. And Pagani Design copies mainstream designs and then offers them at a lower price point. There are a lot of pros and cons with them. Look at that video if you want more information. But one of the watches I really liked was the PD1651, which is a Yachtmaster copy. And then I also looked at a PD1649, which is a Tag Heuer Atavia copy. Speaking of that, we're gonna do a giveaway. In the description below, you'll find a link to a Google form. Just fill out the information and submit. We're gonna do a random drawing and the lucky winner will get this watch. If you want all the specs and information on the PD1649, again, it's a copy of the Tag Heuer Octavia. This is the blue dial. Then go back and look at the uh, review that I did, look at other information online but this is going to go out to a lucky subscriber slash viewer. Now, the tag copy was a little bit bigger than what I would like, but I really do like and have been wearing quite a bit the PD1651, the Yachtmaster copy, which they call the Explorer. And there were three things I mentioned I wanted to do. Swap the seconds hand, realign the bezel because it came misaligned, and remove the Cyclops because I very much dislike the Cyclops, the monocle on a watch face. And I've already swapped the seconds hand. You'll see it when we get up close and doing the other stuff today, but here it is sort of up front. I didn't make a video of that. I've shown putting hands on other watches, but I, maybe I'll do just a seconds hand swap in the future. This was actually put together a little bit better than I expected on the inside. It does have plastic movement holders, but there are two of them that are interlocking. It keeps it nice and secure and tight in there, and everything was nice and ship shape on the inside. So. Again, there's an aspect of this watch that uh, I didn't necessarily discuss in review because I hadn't opened it yet, but the inside looks pretty good. So I've swapped the second hand. What I'm gonna do in this video, and I'll show you up close, the bezel's just slightly misaligned, enough to irritate me a little bit. And I thought, you know, I could get by without it, but I decided let's make a quick how-to video and show you how I would go about realigning a bezel. And then I'm also gonna take the Cyclops off. I thought about making an individual video for each of those things, removing the Cyclops and, and realigning the bezel, but same tools are sort of in play and figured it'd be easier to show them at the same time. If you do look in the description below for that giveaway form, you'll see a few other links. I like fun watch shirts. Vario makes these that I wear in my videos on a regular basis. We enthusiasts struggle with buying too many watches in a year, knowing when to let go and sell that sort of thing. But they're also having a Kickstarter in about a month from when I'm filming this for a really cool looking uh, World War I trench watch. Has some really cool straps with it. Looking forward to that one myself. But I'll throw in a link below that shows off the prototypes for that particular watch. I think you'll like it. And also, if you need a watch collection app and you're on iOS, I use Watchy. I've talked about it several times. I mention it on a regular basis. Watchy Lite is coming out, a free version that will let you put in a few watches and test most of the features. So if you don't want to necessarily you know, bite the bullet and pay the $5 for the app, there's a free version coming soon. It will be limited in some respects, but check it out. I'll link to that below as well in the description. All right, enough of that. Let's do some work. I want to talk about some of the options when it comes to tools if you're going to do bezel work whether that's removing a bezel the insert and replacing it the cyclops lens this is the pd 1649 this is the giveaway watch i'll use it to help me illustrate the concepts uh, since it also has a bezel on it though it doesn't have a cyclops so there are a lot of tools out there uh, you might see something like this this is a rubber grip so if you want to remove the bezel you can place this around the bezel it's flexible and you just give it a tight squeeze and then you turn and pull and pop it off uh, depending on the type of watch quality of watch type of bezel uh, how it's connected the system the mechanism underneath this may or may not work it just kind of depends but these are pretty cheap less than 20 bucks usually so an inexpensive option but isn't going to necessarily work all the time a lot of people will talk about using just something in the kitchen drawer like a knife. I have a tool that came with my 3D printer to help take 3D prints off of the glass plate. And you've seen me work on 3D printing stuff before in my earlier videos. And this has a little bit of an edge on it, but not a lot. It's a little bit better than what you would get in the drawer like a butter knife or something like that. The only issue is if you were going to use this, 
and like I said, you'll see videos and things where you know you, you slide this between the bezel and the case, and you give it a little bit of a twist and pop, and the bezel pops off. If you wanted to remove the entire bezel, the only thing to be careful with this sort of an approach is that you've got metal on metal. So either tape up the lugs or the section that you're planning to insert this tool into. Same thing if you're using one of the bezel removal tools that has, it looks like a little stand you can put the case on and then there are four pieces of metal on each side. I'll put a picture up in the video and you basically turn a screw and they tighten and it brings the four ends closer and closer and closer and it has sharp ends and it will get underneath uh, the bezel and in between the case and the bezel and then enough pressure enough time and pops right off i'll put the picture up there but that's another tool you'll see from time to time used i don't need that for this particular task i'm doing today Bergeon has a version of this tool it's like 350 bucks you can buy on ebay or some other places some sort of knockoff designs that are chinese manufacture that are like 30 40 bucks and i actually have one of those as well um, on the way, I want to try it out, maybe do a tool review on it and see how good it actually is at removing uh, bezels. But if you were going to go for something that's metal on metal and you don't want to about taping up the leg, lugs and stuff like that, I would also highly recommend like nylon pry bar tools. These can work for some bezels, again, not all, depending on how thin the tools you have are. Nylon is a good sturdy material. You can sand it, you can file it, you can take a razor blade or exacto knife to it and sharpen it up and get it nice and thin usually. But a lot of times you don't have enough space to get this kind of a tool or the leverage in there. But this is another option. Again, it always depends on the watch itself, the type of bezel and mechanism, so on and so forth. And there are different designs. I kind of like this one. It's got a little bit of a leverage uh, look about it. You can get it underneath here and, and pop the bezel off perhaps. So nylon pry bar tools, these are like seven, eight bucks. So that's a good cheap option. But for what we're doing today, we're not going to be removing the entire bezel. Now, a lot of videos will show if you want to remove the insert. Okay, first remove the entire bezel, and then you're going to go about removing the insert from the bezel. We're not going to do that. What we're going to do is soak the entire front of the watch in nail polish remover, which is mostly acetone, or you can get some that are completely uh, acetone, but you'll notice there's all the flammable warnings and harmful is swallowed, etc., etc. That will also help for cleaning up any residue that might remain on the bezel or the insert uh, before we put it back in. To reattach it, we're going to use GS Hypo Cement. This stuff has been around for a while. Uh, another thing you might see is you can get some double sided 3M rings. These are available on several different sites. They're used in Seiko mods a lot, but essentially double sided adhesive pre-cut rings. You just got to have a bezel that's the same size as the rings that are sort of standard default. And I think they do fit these Pagani uh, 1651s, but I like having sort of a flexible option no matter what bezel I'm working on. GS Hypo Cement is uh, fairly flexible and forgiving. It's water resistant, doesn't make much of a mess. It's got a pretty fine applicator as you'll see. What's nice about it is if you put a little too much in the bezel and you push it down and squeaks out a little bit, you'll be able to just wipe it away after it dries. It's easy cleanup. It's got some of that strength of super glue, but more water resistance and it's more forgiving. But this will hold in pretty well and it's a pretty good all around thing to have. This is also used for watch crystals to keep watch crystals nice and secure inside of a case. So GS Hypo Cement and then to remove the Cyclops. A little torch. This is a little blue butane torch. Makes great creme brulees, but also great at removing a cyclops lens. All we need is a little heat. A little torch is a good, easy way to do that, and we'll use the acetone to help clean up the residue from underneath of the monocle. Let's do it. What I'm going to do is get a little tray here, and very sophisticated nail polish remover, which is mostly acetone, if not all acetone, depending on what type you're getting. And I am going to pour some into the tray. I'm going to make sure it's flat and you've got enough in there that you can get the entire bezel under. And make sure that the crown is screwed down and uh, it should be fine. And we're going to let this sit for about an hour. All right, now that this has been soaking for about an hour, I'm going to just take it out and I'll throw it on paper towels to start just to sop up some of that nail polish remover slash acetone. Keep that around, 
keep a Q-tip handy. You're going to need that to kind of help clean up the residue. So let me flip this around. Now, by the way, that bezel should get really clean when you're doing that. I guess I didn't mention Q-tips a little bit ago. But now uh, you can see that I'm holding the bezel still and it's moving. It's because that adhesive is now loose. So I'm going to give it a twist this way, twist this way, back and forth, getting that a little bit loose. If it feels like it doesn't want to come out completely, then you can always leave it in the acetone a little bit longer. But this is spinning fairly well. Move that around a little bit more, twist it back and forth, get that glue moving. I'm going to put a little thin tip screwdriver underneath it here and lift that up. Kind of needs a little bit longer maybe, but here it comes. There we go. All right, and there is our, our bezel insert. And you want to give it a good cleaning. Again, you can always just dip it in the acetone. And you can see the residue in here. Let me get this out of the way. See the glue here. And what I'll do is I'll dip the Q-tip or a Q-tip in acetone and, and clean around like so. And that will come right up. Let me pop in here real quick. You can kind of see what I did was I took my little screwdriver tape tweezers and separate one end of it because it's kind of a ring itself. And get one get the ends disconnected. And then you can take your acetone and just kind of scrape around the edge with it. And that adhesive will just start to come up. You can even take your fingers and kind of pull it up and just use the nail polish remover to clean up all the previous adhesive. You want this nice and clean before you try to reattach the bezel. And hey, if it needs to soak longer, you can always dunk it back in again too. Another thing you've seen me use sometimes is peg wood. And I'm gonna use that and sort of just scrape around the inside of this and get the majority of the adhesive off. And then I'll use a Q-tip with the nail polish remover to get the rest off. So there's the gunk. It'll take, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes maybe to get it all cleaned up just right. So not that long. Now while I've got this off of here, I'm going to put this little wooden board down so I'm not putting heat close to my pad here. And I'm going to Again, use my peg wood here a little bit. I'm going to just for a couple seconds use my torch to heat up the lens. It'll be very clear whenever this is ready to come off. Just got to warm it up for just a few seconds. You'll see a little puff, maybe white, um, underneath of the lens as the adhesive sort of lets go. And you can just use the peg wood to sort of push it away, and then we'll use the acetone just to clean up any residue. I'm so ready to get this off here. So just a few seconds, get it a little bit warm and then take it away and then maybe a little bit more, just a few seconds. So I'm gonna warm that up, take it away a little bit. You don't want it to get too hot underneath as well. Take it away. It will get hot. This one's taking a little bit more heat than I would have expected, but okay. And after it's heated up just a little bit, also you can heat it up too much and then you might dislodge the, the crystal overall as well. So just, you know, you got, if you do just get your crystal press out and push it back in. But after you've heated this up a little bit, you should be able to just kind of pry that away. There will be some residue still on the lens. I'm going to knock this off of there. It's a little bit warm like so, and then I can get it off of this little block of wood, which I was just using for protecting myself because of the heat. And then you'll see that there is some residue still on there from the lens, and we'll have to use some acetone to clean that up as well. So get a little tray here, Q-tips, and We'll just 
comfortable in this a little bit. This will just take a, a few minutes to, to clear up that it adhesive. It's gonna look so much better. You know, to be honest, they actually have some really good adhesive. I don't know what they used on these, both for the um, bezel insert and the Cyclops, but pretty strong stuff, whatever they used. Better quality than I would have expected, again, given that price point. The nice thing about this is that it's sapphire crystal, so you can scratch at it with your fingernails and Q-tips and stuff, and you don't have to worry about scratching it at all. We'll get this cleaned up. Almost there. Okay, now I'm going to glue the insert back in using the GS Hypo Cement. I've already talked about this a little bit. It's got a very fine applicator. When I pull this out, you're going to see a tube that's attached to uh, the cap, which sticks down into the bottle so it doesn't seal up the applicator. And it's got a really fine tip on the end. And I'm just going to take a trip around and put the adhesive on it. If I push the insert down and a little bit squeezes out the side, that would be okay. This stuff just dries and you can wipe it off. It's pretty forgiving in that way. And I'll use some watch tissue to, to help me you know, dry off the applicator if I need to or when I need to. Let's just pop this open and it'll start to come out on its own probably, but it's pretty fine. Just using my left hand here and putting a layer of this down all the way around. Don't need a ton of it, but I want it the whole way around. Good protection for it. I'm gonna set that down for a second because this stuff does dry pretty quick. And I'm going to set it down like so using my magnification to make sure that's aligned. If this goes out of frame for a second, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get it right under my nose. This will take some time to dry. Not a great length, but I'd leave it for an hour, you know, just for the sake of leaving it. Once you set it, you don't want to move it around too much. There it is, and you can see it's nice and aligned, and that looks excellent with that blue hand. No Cyclops, that date's clear now from any angle, and my bezel is now aligned. And like I said, if there is any residue on the side, like there's a little bit right here next to the four, that'll dry, that'll just wipe right off. Not a big deal. Cool, put the bracelet back on it, and we're done. We've talked some tools, I've shown the process, so if you're looking to remove a bezel, realign one, perhaps remove a Cyclops lens, now you have an idea of how you might go about it. I was already wearing this PD1651 quite a bit, and now that I've got that blue seconds hand, that lens is gone, and I've got that bezel fixed, it's spot on, it's gonna get even more wear. I love it as sort of a daily wear watch in all kinds of environments. It's been in the lake a bunch of times, I'm really getting a lot of use out of it, enjoying it, and it was less than 100 bucks. That's my opinion, what do you think? Leave some comments below. Subscribe if you haven't. Check me out on Instagram at watch underscore complications and check out the website watchcomplications.com. I am Brian, I am out.